um, I was going through cancer treatment. Um, it was toward the end of, end of my treatment, but you know, I spent a lot of time on the internet. Uh, and that's how I ran across it. And you know, I looked at it and of course, the first thing I was like, oh, I've been doodling forever. Um, but I liked how, you know, she had put the things together so I, and I saw, you know, the words untangle. So then I just did my internet search and just grabbed everything that said Zentangle and absorbed it and, uh, you know, bought a bunch of books. I just, when I see something, I kind of go all in. I do other artwork too, but I needed something that was, you know, pretty easy, didn't take a lot of thought especially, um, because I had, you know, gone through chemo and I had chemo brain and it is a real thing. Um, you can't really remember things and you can't, you can't formulate, you know, if, if I have to think about what I'm gonna do, I lose it. Um, so Zentangle was, was easy for me to stay with my art stuff, um, which helped with the depression that comes along with the pain that comes with the chemo. Um, and then, then I went through surgery and um, radiation as well. But I didn't find Zentangle until um, between surgery and radiation. And I wish I would have found it at the beginning of chemo, the, at the very beginning. Not that I could have really done a lot, but I could have done a little each day. You know, maybe just one tangle would, would be all I could get through, but it would have given me something. Because at the beginning of chemo, there, there's no light at the end of that tunnel. Um, you know, it's only four months, and I kept trying to tell myself, but you can't see the end of it when you're in it at all. What I want to do with this is I want to go back to the cancer center. And I want to, um, I want to go uh, to the infusion center. Um, you know, you sit in your chair, it's, they're comfortable chairs, um, but you're, you're in your cube and most people had someone with them, um, like I did. My wife was amazing through the whole thing, um, but some people didn't. Um, and like I said, if I would have had it, then um, I would have done it while getting infused, but I would have had something to do when I got home because all you do is sit on the couch. You can't do anything. It took everything out of me to get up off the couch and get a glass of water. I mean, seriously, I couldn't breathe. So I want to go back and I want to share it with the patients, you know, volunteer. They have an art therapy program. So I want to sit with them and, um, you know, show them. And if they can't do it, you know, maybe they want to watch me. I'm not that great, but it's something to do, especially if they don't have anybody with them. Um, and same for radiation. You know, when you're waiting for radiation, um, they, my hospital had puzzles all over us and everybody did the puzzles. And not everybody likes puzzles, but everybody did the puzzles because you're trying to take your mind off of it and focus on something else because um, radiation is very painful. Yeah, but I, I mean, being here with all the people I've met and everybody else's story, I mean, I would say 95% of the people I talk to have been affected by cancer. And, you know, that was crazy. That was crazy. Um, but all the all the love that comes out of Maria and Rick is amazing. You know, they're so open and caring and, and their whole family is in the business. So you know that they're, they're just fantastic people. And you just wanna like bring them in close and take them home with you, you know? So it's really, just being here has opened me up more to it and, and the feeling part of it, you know, because learning in books, you're like, oh, this is a nice art form and you have to have focus and all this. But when you're here and you hear other people's stories and, and you listen to, it, to the 
passionate way they talk about it, you know, it just opens you up. And it, it's just been amazing. I'm so glad I came.